Welcome to the Yaha Essentials tutorial series. My name is Chris, or you may know me better as Chulu Longhorn Online. I'm here with Yahaha doing this tutorial series all about creating and playing with Yahaha Online. Yahaha is a UGC or user generated content platform. In Yahaha, you can create what we call spaces where you can play and hang out on your own or with friends. To get started, head to yaha.com and sign up. Then, once you've done that, you can download Yahaha Studio and log in. Once you're logged in, you'll be on the Create page, which at this point will be empty. Let's look around a bit. Here is the Play page, where you'll find spaces that other creators have published for anyone to check out. Also, you can find your user profile at the bottom, and you can log out. Now, let's go back to the Create page. Here, you see two tabs, My Spaces and Templates. In the Templates tab, you can find templates you can use to create your own spaces. There's a lot here, so I encourage you to look around. Now, let's go back to My Spaces and we can create a space of our own. Now that's gonna bring up another Templates dialog for you to choose from, and I'm gonna choose the Summer Beach. Click Create, and that'll launch us into Studio Create Mode. Now we're in the editor. First time you use it, you're gonna get pop-ups to walk you through some of the basics. Okay, let's look around a bit. First, you've got the editor space, which consists of several elements. First, you've got a bar across the top, and we'll get to that later. And you have the editor itself, where you're gonna edit your spaces and you've got several things around the edges. Let's start with the Explorer. The Explorer contains a list of all the objects in your space. So you can find anything you put in your space right in here. Now, then there's My Assets. Your My Assets tab is gonna tame all assets that you can place into a space. Now, these can be resized. So this panel can be dragged out or dragged back. It's pretty nice. Also, don't forget we have sound and visual effects, so you can grab any of those as well. We have a couple of little widgets at the bottom and at the top. The one at the bottom is about manipulating objects. The one at the top is always informational. Right now, it's giving you your mouse controls. Your left click allows you to select objects. You can select anything in the scene, including small things like these grasses. Right click allows you to rotate the view right around the camera's center, so it allows you to look around. Alt right click will allow you to rotate the view around whatever the camera's focused on, so you can see the difference between the two here. Using the scroll wheel will allow you to zoom in and out in small increments. Using the plus or minus keys will allow you to zoom in and out in larger increments. Clicking the scroll wheel or middle clicking will allow you to pan around the screen left, right, and up and down. And using all the mouse controls together, you can pretty much navigate around the scene. As you can see, I can navigate in to this island right here. Along with the mouse controls, you have the WASD keys, or WASD keys. The D key will move you right, the A key left, W key forward, and S key backward. And these can be all combined, so you can navigate around the scene as you can in most games. Now let's take a look at the object controls. First we have grab, which is number one on your keyboard. Next we have move, which is two on your keyboard. Then we have rotate, which is three on your keyboard. Next we have scale, which is four on your keyboard. And finally transform, which is five on your keyboard. We'll go over these more in depth in a later video. Now let's look at the object handles. Handles can be oriented in one of two ways, global and local. 
Local lines up with the object itself. Global lines up with the scene. Local alignments will be different for different objects, as you can see with this tree. Its local alignment is different than the sphere. But the global alignment is the same for both. The same goes for this rock. Along with handle rotation, we have handle position, which can be center or pivot. Center aligns with the center of the object and pivot aligns with the object's pivot point, which can be useful for positioning certain objects like the tree. Now, let's look at the grid. We can turn the grid on here and we can change its settings, such as grid size and grid orientation. To decide what orientation you want, just look at the scene gizmo in the bottom left and align it with the axes you want. And finally, for the bottom panel, let's set a camera view. Just position the camera where you would like it and then click the Add button. Name the view and hit Enter. Now, if you move away from the view, you can quickly return to it by selecting the camera view button and choosing the view you want. And boom, there you go. Now, let's look at the scene gizmo, which is at the bottom right corner. It not only gives you the world orientation, it can be used to manipulate the scene in a useful way. By clicking on any of the cones around the gizmo, you can orient the scene so the camera points in the direction of the cone, which can be helpful for lining up objects. Also, by clicking on the cube at the center of the gizmo, you can switch from perspective mode to orthographic mode, which is a mode without 3D perspective and can help you to align objects even better because it removes distortion due to distance. Be aware, you can tumble the camera in orthographic mode, so if things are looking off and clipping oddly, then clicking on the cube will switch back to perspective mode and the scene will look normal again. With an object selected, we can see the object popouts at the top right. We have transform, appearance, and more. Let's start with transform. In the popout dialog, we have position, rotation, and scale, and each of these has an X, Y, and Z box. You can enter values directly into the boxes to manipulate objects. Next is the appearance popout. This popout is only available when you have a base object selected, such as the half sphere. The popout dialog allows us to manipulate the color of an item with the color picker or by entering a value and its transparency if it has a texture with transparency, such as the glass textures. We can also change the texture applied to the object. Now, let's look at the More pop-out, which opens the other side panel. On the Scene tab, we have the Transform and Appearance dialogs, and there's Collision and Trigger Box, both of which we'll go over in another video. The Transform and Appearance dialogs are the same as the individual dialogs we just covered, including the ellipsis dots, which bring up Copy, Paste, and Reset options for both. The Gameplay tab is an area for gameplay components attached to objects. If you click on the Component button, you'll find all the components that can be added to an object. We'll go over these in more detail in other videos. Just like the other panel, this panel is resizable. That takes care of the editor window area. Now, let's look at the top bar. First, I'd like to look at the scene name, which we can change. Next, let's look at the main menu. In the main menu, we have several options, starting with Save, which allows us to save the scene and its edits. Then there's Play, which gives us the Play and Play Here options. Play starts play mode and spawns our avatar at the main spawn point. Play Here also starts play mode, but spawns our avatar at the current camera location. These options are great for testing as you build. After Play, we have Edit, where the options are only selectable if we have an object selected, as the options all work on objects. In the Edit menu, we have Undo and Redo. We have Copy and Paste. We have Duplicate, which is like a copy and paste combined. We have Array Duplicate, 
which allows for copying objects in rows, which is helpful when doing walls and floors. We have Delete, which removes an object, and we have Select None, which deselects all objects. We'll go over all these operations more in depth in another video when we cover working in a scene. The object window can also only be selected when we have an object selected and opens a menu which has our object reset options. The view option opens a menu which contains a focus option, which we can use to focus on an object. It also has zoom in and out, like using the keyboard. The focus option is where the shift right click camera control comes into its own. Continuing, we have the preferences dialog. This dialog contains three areas, general, editing tools, and scripting. In the general area, our first option allows us to change the render quality. With this, we can lower the render quality, which would allow us to work more easily on lower end computers. The rest of the options in the general area have to do with the camera and how it moves around the scene. We can adjust the move speeds, the pan speed, the zoom speed, and the rotation speed. In the editing tools area, we have the various grid and snapping settings. Under grid, we can set the color and opacity of the grid to make it easier to see in a scene. Increment unit is where we can set the snapping settings. By changing the move, rotate, and scale units here, we can change how an object moves when snapping while editing a scene which happens while holding the shift key while manipulating objects in a scene. The scripting tab is where we set up our scripting editor for writing scripts. Scripting is done with Lua in Yahaha, and we'll go over it more in depth in another video. Next, we have the console. This is helpful when you're doing scripting as it gives you messages about your scripts. We'll talk more about it in another video as well. If you've been paying attention to the navigation bar across the top, You'll notice a change which has to do with this next menu item, and that's the thermometer. Currently, clicking this will turn on the thermometer display, which should be on by default. I'll go over the thermometer more a bit later when we get to it as we go across the bar. Next we have help, where we can find various helpful options. The first bit of help is the shortcuts option. This will launch the shortcuts dialog, which contains the editor shortcuts within several tabs. I highly recommend taking some time to look around here. The next bit of help is the help center, which currently sends you to Discord, but will eventually send you to the forum, both of which are places for you to find helpful information and to ask other creators for help. The last bit of help is the feedback option. This will open the feedback dialog where you can both report bugs and make suggestions to the development team. The issue bug section allows creators to report issues or possible bugs they run into. To do this, simply select what the issue is related to, provide a description of the problem, attach files if necessary, such as a screenshot, and choose whether to send system info and allow the devs to contact you back. Then hit submit. The suggestions section is much the same. Simply add a suggestion, attach files, and check your options, and then submit. Use it to suggest features and improvements to Yahaha Studio or Yahaha as a whole. The final main menu option is the About, which provides info about Yahaha Studio. Also, if you have multiple accounts on Yahaha, the account you're currently logged into Yahaha Studio with is displayed at the bottom of the main menu. Now let's go over the rest of the navigation bar. After the scene name, we have the scene and terrain options, which switch Studio through the two editing modes. Scene mode is what we've been working in and where you edit objects in a scene. Terrain mode is where you edit terrains. We'll go over terrain mode more in detail in a later set of videos. The next option at the top opens a gameplay dialog. Here, you have several tabs, each of which is used to manipulate various gameplay settings. In the general gameplay tab, we have game type, which we'll go over in another video, respawn, inventory, and background music, abbreviated BGM. Respawn allows us to control where a player will respawn. 
The options are random, which spawns at a random respawn point in the scene, default, which respawns at the start point, and nearest, which respawns the player at the nearest spawn point to where they died. We can also control the amount of time it takes to respawn. Inventory allows us to control the player's inventory settings. We can enable or disable inventory, set a maximum number of items a player may carry, and set a sound to play whenever a player picks up an item. BGM allows us to control the background music in a scene. We can again enable or disable it and set a sound file to play as the background music. The play buttons allow us to preview the sounds we have set up. The avatar tab allows us to set movement options for the player's avatar while they are within the space. The various gameplay options here can be enabled and disabled. We can set different animations for each of them, and we can set their options, which we'll go over more in depth in a future video. The rest of the gameplay tabs allow us to set up various other gameplay elements, and we'll go over each one in its own video. Now, let's look at the thermometer. The thermometer allows us to gauge the performance of a scene on each platform Yahaha runs on by giving us memory usages for each one. At the top, we have memory usage for the platform we're working on, which encompasses Mac and PC. By mousing over it, we can get a memory usage breakdown by type. Below that, we have memory usage for the mobile platforms through a publish pressure which is an estimate of how much memory the space will use on each mobile platform. Along with the mouse over breakdown pop-up, we can also see a meter which allows us to gauge the estimated performance in real time. The closer the space is to memory limits, the fuller the gauge is. If you wish to hide the thermometer display in the navigation bar, click the ellipsis and choose hide. To close the thermometer dialog, click the X and to re-show the thermometer display on the navigation bar, go to the main menu and choose the thermometer option. Now we come to the question mark, which opens the tutorials and documentation dialog. In the tutorials panel, we have several tutorial videos, which will increase as more are made. In the docs panel, we have the documentation. This panel includes a navigation callout in the top left, the ability to open the docs in a browser, and a search function in the top right. Next, we get to the Asset Library, which contains a number of pre-built assets we can download for use in our scenes. The Asset Browser is extensive, so we'll give it its own video where we'll go over it in depth. Finally, at the far right of the top navigation bar, we have the Play button. This button can be used to play the level we are editing as I discussed earlier and contains a drop-down which gives us the play and play here options. As you can see, the play button will remember the last play option we chose from the drop-down and will keep it as the play option it executes. That covers the Yahaha Studio Editor. Now I'm going to speed things up and quickly edit the scene. We'll go over all of these processes in a later video. But I did this here so we can have something to use as we enter our scene info, which I'll go over next, along with how we can publish our scenes both publicly and privately. Now that we have an edited space, let's go to the space info screen. Here, we can edit the info about our scene. Let's name the scene Beach Pier to reflect what it now is. Next, let's change our screenshots to ones I set up earlier. We can add up to 10 of these and remove any old ones. Notice how one of my screenshots has a banner added. This helps the space to be more visually appealing to players. Now we'll add a description to give players an idea of what the space is and what they can expect to find when they play it. In this case, it's just a space for hanging out. Then we can add some keywords to help players find it better. I suggest not using keywords which are too generic, such as fun, but rather describe what the space is and what it was designed for. Don't forget to click on save to save this information. Otherwise, it won't update to your space and it won't be there after you close the space info page. Once we save the info, you can see how the space has changed everywhere. If 
Finally, in the space state area, we can delete our space, we can further edit our space, and we can publish our space. To share a space privately, we click the share button, which will give us a link to the space which we can share with others in any way you can share any other link. All they will need is a Yahaha account to play it. To publish our space publicly, we click the publish button. This will make the space live on Yahaha and make it available in the play page after a few minutes making it publicly available to all Yahaha users. After a space has been published, we can choose to remove it, which removes it from the play area, making it no longer available for public play. It does not delete the space. We can also back up the space to a new draft, which will make it available for editing again. When we publish the new draft, it will then replace the currently published space. If it has been removed, it will make it available for play again. That covers the basics and editor interface of Yahaha Studio. In the other videos in this series, we'll delve deeper into Yahaha, both from the space creation and editing side, and from the gameplay side, with looks at object manipulation, terrains, the asset editor, and more. So, don't forget to like and subscribe so you can be notified when we post more Yahaha Essentials tutorials. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you all again soon.